equilibrium in competitive labor markets occurs at the intersection of labor demand and labor supply. In this model of labor markets, there is no involuntary unemployment since every unit of labor that is willing to work at the equilibrium wage gets hired. If wages are below the market wage, a shortage of labor occurs, while a surplus of labor occurs when wages are higher than the market wage. In this context, a surplus is referred to as unemployment. If society considers the equilibrium wage to be too low, policymakers often intervene and establish a minimum wage. A minimum wage is a price control that effectively establishes a price floor, which is a mandated price below which the market price cannot go. Price floors result in reduced quantity demanded and an increase in quantity supplied of a good or service. The minimum wage, like other effective price floors, creates a surplus of labor. There are more workers willing to work at this minimum wage than there are employers willing to hire at that minimum wage. A change in wage results in a movement along a labor demand curve, just as a change in the price of a good causes movement along the demand curve for that good. Wages that rise too high can decrease the quantity of labor demanded, while low wages increase the quantity of labor demanded. There are a number of factors, however, that can shift a demand curve for labor. Because the marginal revenue product of labor is the price of a firm's output multiplied by the marginal product of labor, changes in the firm's output price results in corresponding changes in the marginal revenue product of labor. When demand for a firm's output rises, the firm can increase revenue by producing more output. This eliminates a potential shortage caused by demand exceeding supply. To produce more units of output, the firm will hire more workers. Specifically, price increases for the product will result in the labor demand curve shifting to the right, and price decreases will result in the shift to the left. The labor demand curve shifts when workers' marginal product of labor changes. Specifically, the labor demand curve will shift to the right when the marginal product of labor increases, and the curve will shift to the left when the marginal product of labor decreases. In general, economists refer to factors that change workers' marginal product of labor as changes in technology, such as the use of computers in offices, which can either make workers more productive and thus increase their marginal product of labor, or replace them, thus lowering their marginal product of labor. The improvements in computer processing power have made workers who use computers much more productive, which increases their productivity. At the same time, improvements in cell phones and social media have lowered workers' productivity at the workplace. As a result, changes in technology can result in shifts of the labor demand curve in either direction. Substitutes in production are resources that are used instead of another in a production process, while complements in production are resources that are used together in a production process. When the supply of a substitute of labor increases, the price of that resource decreases, and that substitute resource is more attractive in the production process. If the price of a substitute decreases enough, the firm may be able to lower the price it sells for its product enough that they end up using more of both inputs. For example, legal software has become significantly cheaper over the past decade, and instead of replacing paralegals, law firms have started using more software and more workers because they were able to lower the prices. This is often known as the automation paradox. The demand for labor actually increases when the supply of substitutes increases. A more traditional use of substitutes in production is where firms switch between the substitutes so that the demand for labor decreases when the supply of a substitute for labor increases, and the demand for labor increases when the supply of a substitute for labor decreases. In this traditional case, a substitute for labor could be a new type of technology, as in an increasingly automated factory which replaces workers. A factory may become so automated that it only needs people to supervise the machines, thus the demand for labor decreases. When the supply of a complement to labor increases, the price of that resource still decreases, but because labor is used together with its complement in the production process, the price decrease makes both labor and its complement more attractive resources. Therefore, demand for labor increases when the supply of a complement to labor increases, and demand for labor decreases when the supply of a complement to labor decreases. What about the supply curve? 
While a change in the wage results in a movement along a labor supply curve, there are a number of factors that can also shift a labor supply curve. The supply of labor changes when leisure time is valued more or when the taste for leisure changes. Specifically, labor supply increases when the taste for leisure decreases, and labor supply decreases when the taste for leisure increases. The taste for leisure changes over time as a result of environment and personal circumstances. Even though economists sometimes refer to the labor market, there are actually a number of different labor markets. The market for factory workers, hairdressers, and so on. If an individual has the skills to take on various jobs, they can then choose which markets to supply labor to, depending on relative wages in different markets. When alternative opportunities for a worker increase, labor supply in the market under consideration decreases because the worker is switching some of their labor supply to other markets. Conversely, when the alternative opportunities for a worker decrease, labor supply in the market under consideration increases since the individual no longer has as many places to potentially provide their services. If an individual is trained as a teacher and a plumber, they may get a teaching job and spend less time plumbing, taking away supply from the plumbing labor market. But if the local college where the person was teaching closes, they would likely spend more time plumbing because their teaching services were no longer needed, thus adding to the plumbing labor market. Changes in population of an area impact labor supply. Immigration can potentially impact labor supply. Skilled laborers such as scientists, doctors, and engineers often immigrate to a country or place that needs those services. Immigration can also supply needed workers in fields such as hospitality and farming. The demographics of an area also change, thus changing labor supply. Skilled laborers could all leave an area, diminishing that specific labor market. Population in certain areas can grow, making the labor market larger. Just as the number of sellers is a supply shifter in a goods market, it is also the case that the number of sellers is a supply shifter in the labor market. In labor markets, however, the sellers of labor are people looking to work, so the movement of people around the world causes labor supply curves to shift. Specifically, increases in the number of people shifts the labor supply curve to the right, and decreases in the number of people shifts it to the left.